short little video about I received many questions about the vocation and whatever happens whenever you do a mishap or you struggle with the words or something else so you just keep on going you pronounce it as best as you can and you just follow the rhythm and continue with just and when we send mishaps happen during evocation if you start obsessing with the mishaps you stop the climbing up the, to the astral if we put it like that since you are climbing up first and you are going into that state when you are up so you just keep on going and uh, in then when you are up in the astral you will mumble and not speak so clearly anyway so it is the journey and you just keep on moving forward. And you keep your focus on the vocation ahead and just uh, do as you best you can and keep on moving. And then you start to paying attention to any shift, temperature, noise, lights, sounds, smells, scents. There are so many different things that can activate or multiple can activate at once. Um, and when you perform the evocation and you ask the spirit to appear, you give it plenty of time. It can take up to a half an hour for it to manifest or to give you the answers you need. But you feel it often within, so... If you wait for five minutes and you don't feel or sense anything, you can proceed and ask it again and so on. But, but give it a, a time to give you an answer or that you might think that you get some insight or something. It's very difficult for a spirit to manifest in front of you. It's just in the Hollywood movies where they do it uh, easily. And uh, sometimes they might appear out of nowhere and uh, when you don't do evocation as well, but that's a little bit different. But uh, they come and uh, you should know that you are always heard, so the spirits know you are calling them. And they can hear you, but it might be just that uh, you don't really understand what that particular spirit is saying or since they communicate in a little bit of different ways and it might be like you get a download or sometimes you get the download afterwards and it, it isn't always so crystal clear in the beginning and not after that either. Sometimes you get a very strong clear message and you might uh, see something appear in front of you, candle flames go wild or in the incense smoke it takes shape so when you are scrying and other times you might see something or hear something very clearly and it can be in your mind's eye or in the black mirror. And um, and in the old grimoires, especially when uh, sometimes when uh, they keep on repeating and the spirit didn't uh, appear, then they always took it as a granted that that spirit was bound by another magician or a sorcerer. So they do the unbinding where they release the spirit and then start the evocation again. So you have these different moments in the old books. But especially since uh, we are talking about angels here. So after you performed the evocation, try to relax. It's very difficult in the beginning. And... Listen and then you know within yourself that you are being heard. And that's the key essence. You must know and believe it that you are heard. And then you trust the magic to work. And how the magic manifests, that's always different. Magic always manifests in one way or another especially when you're working with angels and uh, these really high-ranking spirits. But it's not always so, as it's said in the books. It might go in a slightly different way and, and in a different time frame. And uh, 
often when magic uh, appears in the real life, I find myself thinking, was that the magic I did seven years ago or 20 years ago or was that the ritual since I've worked with angels for so long? So I can't always know which one, if there are some similar magic going on and you help people and... Uh, Sometimes they ask you to repeat one thing, so that means that I can't be really sure was it the first time or the second or the third time. But that's just how it works. So you relax and know that the magic starts. And then, of course, it's the analytical mind that comes in that what if I did it in the wrong astrological or planetary hour and uh, so on. So... It gives you a peace of mind to do the work beforehand on evocation and uh, check out it's a good uh, use the angel and the planetary hour for the angel and just go with it. And otherwise, if you can feel relaxed and you know have a uh, connection to the angels and you feel strongly called, just call upon them and just say that on Sundays you call Michael and Uriel and on uh, Mondays it's Gabriel and um, Wednesdays Raphael and so on and Thursdays Jofiel and Satkiel and uh, Fridays Haniel and Saturdays Cassiel and Safkiel. So whatever you choose but uh, this was just a short overrun and uh, this came to me through my mailbox today. Uh, it was another Christmas card and this is a little happy angel and it's one more of these. It's done by Marcus Kolp, uh, he's always from the Mun och Fotvårdarna, Målarna, Mun och Fotmålarna and it's a company where they, and he's drawn it with his mouth. So... He can draw a lot better angels than I can do, and he drew it with his mouth, so I just wanted to give them a shout out. I don't know if that company exists or uh, nowadays, but I wanted to give something for the artist here. So, have a magical, magical day, and bye for now.